that's the beauty of this show is I just get to carry on a conversation with uh, Jack Carl, we, and we make Tom Deanhart wait, wait for five minutes, not to mention Gordon back in the, uh, uh, you know, he's wondering, what, what am I doing here? So I am back. Tom Deanhart is on the line, and uh, uh, Tom, welcome back to the show. You'll be back in town next week, obviously, when uh, spring football kicks back up. Uh, it's snowing in West Lafayette. Uh, how is it in St. Louis right now? Just cold. Just kind of a cold day. The winds died down. I'm going to have to tell you something, though, Alan. I don't think I can compete with Bobby Vinton references. Oh, I know. That was a great story. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, Jack's a, Jack is a uh, – he has seen a lot, and he doesn't uh, – I, I think he's careful about – I mean, he's, he's just been such an interesting experience of doing all that. But no Bobby V re- references uh, – that's for certain, for certain. But Tom, uh, I do think uh, uh, you know we've been taking this week off in football. We'll start with football first. Um, just your overriding comments. Uh, the first uh, first five practices were kind of a, we're a third of the way through of uh, spring ball, and uh, what you've seen and what's impressed you from uh, Jeff Brom. What will be Jeff Brom's? Uh, third spring practice at Purdue. Yeah, five spring practices, Alan. They'll pick back up on Monday, March 18th at 4 p.m. Um, only three of the first five practices were in full pads. So, honestly, you can't tell a whole heck of a lot at this stage. Uh, a few things have stood out, and I tell you, uh, one of them just is the senior quarterback, Elijah Sindlar. Um, as you know, um, this is clearly his team yeah. with David Blau gone. Uh, and the first time in Brahms' short tenure that there's been no quote-unquote, I guess, quarterback controversy or competition. And Sindler's playing with a lot of confidence. He knows this is his team. And he's throwing the football extremely well at this point. Uh, also from a positive standpoint, now, and I think the, uh, there's four early enrollees, but two really stand out, both on defense. Of course, Jalen Graham, the six foot three safety, 215 pounds. I wonder what his body's going to look like in a couple of years, Alan, yeah. when he's been on campus lifting and eating. Looks like a linebacker now. And then, of course, George Karloft is the local product. Um, I tell you what, he's got a lot of want to, and uh, he's shown a burst off the edge. And talking to Jeff Brom and Nick Holt, they've been awfully pleased uh, with the precocious defensive end from West Lafayette High School. You know, I thought Tom Deanhart was going to be the most famous uh, West Lafayette grad, but he's, he may beat you at the end of the day. So, I uh, know George is a, certainly is an interesting, uh, uh, interesting uh, guy to watch. You know, in terms of injuries, are a big part of uh, yeah. spring ball. Obviously, uh, much documented in terms of the fact that that uh, you're trying to find an interior part of the offensive line. Victor Beach, uh, the heir apparent, it seems. To Kirk Barron's position at center has had some injury issues. Uh, that will remain a challenge for for uh, Jeff Brom to, to see where you can get to a, a point of stability. Are you going to be able to get to that point by the time spring ball uh, uh, concludes? And, and the answer may not be may, may not be possible just yet to be able to say you got that rock solid just because of injuries and and experience there. Yeah, if you were to try to identify the biggest worry. You just hit the nail on the head there, Alan, with the offensive line, the interior in particular. Uh, Victor Beach is missed. He missed that last week entirely of those two practices with a back injury. And Jeff Brom spoke to the media on Wednesday before the team broke. And uh, he's really disappointed in the fact Beach hasn't been out there. I mean, he wants Victor Beach to be that guy making those snaps, like you said. And he knows how valuable this time of year is for a guy like Beach who's never really played. So um, they want to get him healthy and get him on the field. Uh, again, the two guards also have to be uh, developed as well. Um, sort of been a little bit of a turnstile there, especially a right guard. Uh, a redshirt freshman named Jimmy McKenna has been running at left guard for most of spring ball with the ones. Um, so, yeah, Alan, I think this offensive line, it's a to-be-continued story, maybe right up until that week leading into the Nevada game, honestly. And always remember this, too. I mean, Brian Newbert pointed it out in this week's boiling over. Um, there's a, probably a good chance maybe Purdue adds a grad transfer offensive line or there's a period. So um, there's always a possibility that maybe some personnel could come in to help that, uh, help that position. 
Yeah, we're looking right now at a picture of George Karloftis wearing jersey number five. We've had a, just a, a couple frames ago of Victor Beach, number 56, uh, the uh, center that uh, that uh, um, Tom just mentioned. You talk about pass rushing. Obviously, number five, George Karloftis, uh, uh, is going to be a big – needs to be a big part of that. Uh, what can they do in spring ball to – you know, because it's hard. You know, they're not in pads the whole time, full pads all the time. You're trying to make sure you guys don't guys don't get hurt. What, from a technique standpoint, I guess, does Nick Holt and company try to do to to instill? You know, to make sure that to, to instill in a Carl Loftus and others that, that that you can get more of a pass rush. Is it drill or drill? Drills or you certain uh, scrimmage situations. What do you see from that standpoint? It's really a combination of both scrimmages and drills. Um, we've seen the offensive linemen and the defensive linemen square off in uh, one-on-one pass rush, pass block uh, drills, and that's always a good, uh, just a good exercise for not only the defensive linemen, but obviously the offensive linemen too. So that that's one area during practice where. You can try to develop and augment somebody's pass rush. And then on that last Wednesday, they had a, at least one period of a sort of situational scrimmaging where it was full go. And uh, obviously that's the live situation, game-like conditions, and that's ideal to uh, also develop people's just overall skills and then pass rush skills in particular. So you're right, you always want to be mindful of not getting guys hurt, but you still have to try to go full ball in, in drills and scrimmages try to get that pass rush developed. Yeah, I mean, you've watched uh, practice over the last couple of years, but you watch uh, Jeff Brom uh, coach a, and lead a team in this situation. And these types of drills and practices, uh, uh, he's pretty active in practice in terms of it from a, from a teaching standpoint and administrative standpoint. But what do you see when you watch Jeff uh, uh, maneuver around the field during practice? What, 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 when fans go to get a chance, which they can do to spring ball, yep. uh, what do you expect? To, uh, what should fans expect when they watch Jeff Brom? Like you said, he's, uh, he's not a climb the tower coach, look down from his tower with his megaphone and observe things, uh, sort of like a CEO perspective. Uh, like you said, Alan, he's, he's got his hands in the dirt. Yeah, uh, he's got his sleeves rolled up, and he'll be out there sometimes, Alan, on special teams drills, for instance, holding pads, hitting players as they go by, you know, providing resistance. So, uh, again, he's right in there uh, with in, in the trenches and helping people out, and very hands-on as a coach. So, um, I, I think I think as a as an assistant coach, I'd like that. As a player, I'd love that to know my head coach, the number one guy, is uh, that immersed and yeah. the minutia of certain elements of practice. Uh, I think I think it shows a lot and tells you a lot about Jeff Brom. All right, we've got just a few minutes left. I want to get into a little bit of basketball, we, a little bit of basketball history. Today, Troy Lewis's 53rd birthday, uh, and, and I don't know whether uh, whether we can get to that photo of him that I put in there. I know that uh, Brad and Gordon are working hard in the back rooms, but uh, – uh, Troy uh, is a Purdue basketball player, is a guy that uh, uh, was one of the all-time greats, a two-time All-Big Ten guy, and uh, led Purdue to a Big Ten championship uh, along with Todd Mitchell and Everett Stevens. Uh, You watched him play a lot as a young, uh, right out of of college, basically, or in your college years, I should say. Tell us about uh, your memories of Troy. Yeah, what a special player, Alan. We sat side by side, maybe on press row a few times. I used to help keep statistics. I remember and sit by Jan Winger other times. Yeah. Well, what, what a special guy. I missed her basketball in 1984 with, of course, Delray Brooks from Michigan City, Indiana. Brooks goes to Indiana. Of course, Lewis goes to Purdue. And like you said, arrived with Todd Mitchell from Toledo, Ohio, and Everett Stevens from Evanston, Illinois. And Boy, they immediately put their stamp on Purdue basketball. It took them a couple of years to get the program elevated, but by the time they were juniors, like you said, Alan, won a share of the Big Ten title, and then that last year, of course, 16-2, and two, a number one seed. And, of course, this year's team won 16 Big Ten games, although they played 20. The last time Purdue won 16 Big Ten games was Troy Lewis' senior year, 1987-88, Alan, you're looking at the stats again. Um, still number five in Purdue history in scoring, 
and then you you remember this. He didn't get to shoot three pointers until his junior year, yeah. and uh, it was uh, that that's when the three point shot was introduced full scale across college basketball. So over two thousand points, with only really for him uh, about a, you know two years of shooting three pointers. So I know he wasn't the quickest guy in the world, but I tell you what, the guy could score. The guy could uh, he could really shoot, and he was a special player. And about a minute left in the show, but you talk about the Big Ten tournament, and of course, Purdue in the United Center has, he wrote a good story on the site this week about Purdue's challenges. Not that that has really anything to do with this team, that Purdue hasn't played in the United Center in the Big Ten tournament since 2015, so none of these current players, uh, maybe with the except, no, that's right, because even Grady Eifert hadn't, uh, hadn't uh, set foot yet uh, as part of the program. Talk about the, the Purdue's history in the Big Ten tournament and the fact that that's not been uh, Purdue's uh, in Chicago. It's been a challenged area for the Boilermakers. Yeah, it hasn't been a sweet home for the Boilermakers, yeah. right? Uh, five and nine all the time in the United Center uh, during the Big Ten tournament. Of course, Allen, back in 1998, the very first Big Ten tournament was held there yep. in Chicago, and Purdue reached the championship game where it lost to, uh, to Michigan. And you know what's ironic about that, looking back on that event, Alan? That's the only Big Ten tournament ever, and this is the 22nd this year. That's the only time in Big Ten tournament history Purdue and Indiana played. Yep. And, of course, Purdue prevailed. I'm looking at it here, 76 to 71. And, uh, hey, 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 real quick bonus question for you, Alan. Can you tell me who Michigan's head coach was? Brian yeah, Ellerby, right. right? Yeah, Brian Ellerby. I right. Was, he was an interim? I, cause it, was that when, uh, I don't think he was. No, no. he got gotten the head job. That's right. Right before um, or right after Steve Fisher had left. And uh, that's right, Brian Ellerby. Yeah, Where Brian, would Brian so Ellerby yeah, now? Maybe Purdue can reverse its history. You know, in, in Chicago this weekend, Michigan has been a real pain in Purdue's side in the yes. Big Ten tournament. So who knows? Like you said, history doesn't matter really. But it's always fun to look back and remember and uh, when, when you go back to these venues. And like you said, they haven't been there since 2015. Yeah, it, it will be that. And Purdue may get Michigan tomorrow. Purdue needs to take care of Minnesota tonight. Uh, Michigan needs to take care of Iowa. Uh, I believe that they will play the late, uh, late game t uh, tonight. should be an interesting game. All right, Tom, uh, we will look forward to seeing you next week and more spring football coverage. Thanks for joining us and uh, have a great uh, weekend watching some hoops and watching Purdue and see what the Boilermakers do. Thank you, Alan. Take care, buddy. All right. Thanks so much. All right. I want to thank Gordon and Brad, uh, all your hustle to make this happen today. And uh, uh, we, we appreciate the fact that you're uh, working hard to make this show happen. And uh, I don't know who all else is back there today, if, uh, if uh, Steve and Chris are back there. But if anybody that with WLFI, we thank you for your help. We want to thank our sponsors, Basham Reynolds, Triple X. Uh, State Farm Agent Trent Johnson and Hilton Garden Inn. Uh, we are grateful for you. And we, we will be back a little bit time dependent on whether, if for some reason, Purdue plays in the NCAA tournament at 2 o'clock. We'll change the time of our show, but we'll stay tuned on that front. We'll keep you posted on when that next show will air, but it, we will pr plan to have it next Friday, 2 p.m. Uh, it could be in between rounds. You never know how, how that will we'll know a lot more Sunday evening about where the Boilermakers are headed and what time they'll be playing. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks, to, thanks for watching. If you missed part of this show, the replay will post here in about uh, an hour or so. Gordon will get, always gets that done, and we appreciate that as well. Uh, stay warm because it's cold in West Lafayette. Uh, it will be spring soon, but uh, have a great week, everybody. Thanks so much.